In this video tutorial scratch, we're going to make a game called Drop Hero, which is a spin-off of the classic game Guitar Hero. We're going to use some sprites, some sensing operations, and also some random operators to create this game. To begin, we're going to delete the scratch cat out of this project. So in the toolbar, you can select the scissors tool and delete the scratch cat. We're now going to draw a new sprite in this project. So use the paint editor to draw a simple circle that we're going to use for our first sprite. Using the circle tool, you can drag and create a very nice circle. We're going to edit this sprite and make it a red circle. So using the paint bucket, we can dump red paint in there and create a red circle. Select OK to save your editing. Now that we have the first sprite in the game, we can duplicate this sprite to make the same exact one. So if you right click on the sprite from the sprite list and select duplicate, it will create the exact same sprite in your project. Just like in Guitar Hero, we're going to have a certain button and another ball that will drop to it where you have to hit a button to calculate a point. So in this game, the button will be located on the bottom, and the ball will drop from the top and hit the button. Now, we can rename the sprites. So the top ball will be called the red ball. The sprite on the bottom, we can rename it to red button. Now we can start to add some motion into the ball so it can drop to the bottom one where it will be sensed and if you press a key you'll score a point. We'll later write the script for that. But for now, in the motion sen section of your block palette, there'll be a block that says change Y by. We're going to select that and change it to negative 30. So now the ball will drop in the Y direction. It will go in the negative it will go negative 30 steps or down. We want this to repeat until it's touching sprite 2. So there's a block in the control section called repeat until. Now we're going to snap that right around the change y by negative 30. Now to complete the repeat until, we're going to go into the sensing section of the block palette and select touching. We want this to repeat until it's touching the red button and then we want to stop. So, if we say repeat until touching the red button, it will change its Y direction by 30, dropping it to the button. So if you double click, your ball should drop until it's touching the red button positioned underneath it. You can position the red button underneath the red ball on opposite ends of the stage. So now that we have that script written, we can control the stack of blocks by adding in a half block to the stack. So in the control section of your block palette, you can add the when space key is pressed and snap that right on top of the stack of blocks. Now, every time you hit the space key, the red ball will drop to the red button. After writing the script, you can position the red ball back on top of the red button. Using the coordinate system of the ball and the button, you can align them exactly on top of each other in the same X plane. Now that we have the ball dropping, we want to go back to its original position at the top above the red button. So if from the motions section of the block palette, if we use the go to 
x comma y, we can make it so it goes back to its original position after it drops. Now, hitting the spacebar, it will drop until it hits the red button, and then it will go back to its original position. Next, we can add a weight block in so it doesn't just jump to the top. So if you add a weight one second over the go to XY position, your ball should drop, touch the red button, and then go back to the top after it waits a second. <coughs> As you can see, the X value of the red ball and the red button is both negative two, so they're exactly aligned over one another. Now that we have this simple motion, we want to have the red button change costumes when it's touching the red ball. So in the red button's script list, we're going to add some new scripts. From the control section of the block palette, we can drag an if statement into the script list. And from the sensing section of the block palette, we can select if it's touching the red ball from the drop down menu. Now we have to make a new costume for the red ball. So in the costumes tab, we can copy the costume and then edit. We can use this paint editor to make the ball black. So now when it the red ball touches the red button, we can make it say the red button turned to black. Once you are done editing your sprite, you can select OK and it will save it in the costumes list. Now we should have two costumes, one red and one black. Now we can incorporate those two costumes into our project. We can insert from the look section of the block palette switch to costume 2. Adding in some control we can add a weight block and then have it switch back to its original costume of the red ball because that's how long the two balls will be touching for. So this statement says if the red ball touches the button to have the button switch to the black costume, wait one second, and then go back to costume one. But we're going to edit it a little bit more and say wait 0 0.3 seconds. Now we can add some control by adding a when space key is pressed hat block onto the top and then changing the space key to R for red. So now, when you hit the space key, the ball should drop, and then when they touch, if you hit R, the ball will turn black. You can hit R at any point, but the ball will only change colors if the two are touching, and you hit the button at that time. So now, we're going to add a variable into this project. So in the variable section of the block palette, select make a new variable, and we're going to say the name of it is score. So when you hit OK, some more blocks should appear in the variable list. Now we can incorporate that variable of the scoreboard into our project by checking off the score. A little scoreboard should appear on your stage. You can drag it around at any point in your project. We're going to drag it to the bottom left hand corner. Now, to add a scoring mechanism into our project, we can drag in change score by one if the R, press, if the R key is pressed and the two sprites are touching. So now, running this script, if you hit the space bar, the ball should drop, and then when they're touching, if you press R, it should change the red button to a black button, 
and increase the score by one. Next, we can control how many times the ball drops without having to press the spacebar every single time. So, in the red ball script list, we can add in a repeat bracket from the control section of the block palette. So if we select repeat 10 and snap it around everything underneath the when space key is pressed, the ball should drop 10 times when you hit that space key. So running the script by hitting the space key, the ball will drop 10 times, waiting when it touches the bottom sprite and then going back to its original position. Every single time that you hit the R key, if the two sprites are touching, your ball will turn black and your score should increase by one. Now that we have the basis of our game, we can add in some features to make it a little bit more difficult. So, what we're going to do is we're going to add in a wait of a random time so we don't know when the ball will be falling. So if we go into the control section of our block palette, we can select a weight block. And if we snap that in the weight, in the repeat 10 steps, we can make it a random number. So when the space key is pressed, we want to say repeat 10 times, but we want it to wait a random amount of time before it drops. So in the operator section of the block palette, we can have a pick random number from 1 to 10, but we're going to edit that. So if you put that in the wait section, we can say pick a random number from 1 to 4 and wait that many seconds. So now, when you run your script by hitting the space key, your ball should stay at, to at the top for a random number of seconds from 1 to 4 and then drop to the bottom. This will repeat 10 times. This adds a little bit more randomness to your project, not knowing when that ball is going to fall. So it's going to rely on reaction time. This will repeat 10 times until it stops. We can also increase the difficulty level by decreasing the wait time of the ball when, they're two, when the two are touching. So in the wait one second area of the script, we can edit that and say wait 0.4 seconds. So now when you run your script, the ball is going to wait a random amount of time at the top and then drop towards the red button. Once it does, does that, the two sprites will touch. You'll have 0.4 seconds to hit R and get a point before this, the ball, red ball sprite will return to the, its original position. Later, we're going to add in more variables to this project by adding different color balls. So we can add in a red one, a yellow one, a green one, and a blue one, and have them assigned to four different keys on the keyboard. Now that we have that done, we can add some scripts to the stage. So we're going to bring in the set score to zero and we're going to have it reset the whole game. So we're going to use the when space key is pressed and snap it right on top to set score to zero. We're going to change that key to R for reset. And then when we reset it, we're going to have it stop all scripts. So in the control section, it's the one all the way down to the bottom. So now every time you hit R, it will reset the score to zero. Now in the red button section, we're going to change that R key to V because we're going to add in some more. So we're going to make the V key control when you can score a point 
if the two sprites are touching. 